Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. So today we are going to continue with our chapter 7 uh, with the title of Interfacing Technique with PLC. So in this uh, topic, we are going to uh, focus on the interfacing techniques for PLC, uh, which we are going to look into the providing either AC or DC uh, power to a PLC and then we need to identify the various types of PLC input and output configuration and also we will look into the connection of the external components to the PLC inputs and outputs. In the interfacing techniques, uh, we are going to introduce to you uh, the theory on how to connect the PLC uh, to the system that, it, that uh, we are going to control. And then uh, in this uh, interfacing techniques, it is going to involve some connections of such devices. For example, like if you are using switchers, uh, proximity sensors, detectors, okay, or maybe other external high current contactors and motor starters. So we are going to see the theory behind of these interfacing techniques, how to connect uh, those components. Uh, with such different current and voltage features from uh, the components to the PLC and how this connection can be utilized with PLC to control or monitor the systems. So wiring a device to the PLC is very important because you are going to connect this PLC with a high current output such as motor drivers and then maybe pumps or maybe you are going to connect this PLC with a lower input devices, current input devices such as push button. But in order uh, doing these connections, we must uh, make sure that these connections are safe and then the routing of the wiring uh, is safety to minimize the interference between these components with the PLC. And then we have to make sure that all connections are made properly and to the correct terminals and providing adequate fusing to protect the system, especially uh, the whole system and PLC system. So we look into the PLC power connection. So in current PLC, it might be operate uh, in between the operation voltage of 24 volt of DC voltage and maybe 120 or 240 AC voltage. So all of this uh, connection to the PLC must be correctly connected to ensure the safety of the whole operation system. So if we fail to provide a safety connection uh, from the power to the PLC, it might cause a serious damage to the PLC. And therefore, we need to use a proper fuses or maybe an MCB, a miniature circuit breaker, uh, to be inserted in the power line connections to protect both PLC and the power wiring from overcurrent or from accidental shots of equipment's failure. This is the power connection shows wiring diagram for an AC type PLC. So you have an AC input and then this AC input must be correctly connected to the AC type of PLC. So the AC type of PLC is uh, ranging from 120 AC voltage to 240 AC voltage. While in this figure shows the wiring diagram for the DC type of PLC. So the inputs to the DC type is 24 volt plus and minus and also have a common ground here. So we have to make sure that the connection is correct. So after we have ensured the connection between the power source to the PLC, then we need to look into the concept of syncing and sourcing uh, in the interfacing techniques between the sensor input with the PLC. So the syncing and sourcing concept is a normal term that has been used to define the control of direct current flow in a load. Syncing sensor circuit, it provides a grounded connection to the load which allows the current to flow into the sensor to the voltage common. So normally, we are using NPN transistor for that syncing input. While in the sourcing sensor circuit, it provides a voltage source to the load, which allows the current to flow out of the sensor from a positive source. So in this kind of uh, sourcing circuit, we are going to use the PNP transistor as the sourcing output. Now we look into the syncing sensors. So in this diagram, an NPN transistor is used at the syncing sources. So if the sensor is inactive, nothing is detected, and then the active line is low and the transistor is switched off. Uh, this is like an open switch when the transistor is switched off. That means that the output 
of the MPN will have no current in and out. So when the sensor is active, it will make the active line high here. One, and then it will turn on the gate of the MPN here. And then effectively close the switch. This will allow the current to flow into the sensors to the ground. Hence sinking. And then the voltage of the MPN will be pulled down to minus V. If the sensor is inactive, nothing is detected, then the active line is low. While uh, in the sourcing sensors where the PMP transistor is used, okay, if the sensor is inactive, so the active line will be low. And then uh, it will not switch on the transistor here. So the transistor will act as an open switch. So that means that the PMP output uh, will have no current in or out. But when the sensor is active, so it will turn on the gate at this PMP transistor and then it will turn on the transistor here and effectively close the switch. So it will become the closed switch here. So this will allow the current to flow from the positive through the sensor to the output, hence sourcing. So the voltage on the PMP output will be pulled up to V+. plus. So it is the difference between the PMP and NPN. So the PMP, the voltage of the transistor will be pulled out to V positive, while in the NPN, the voltage of the MPN will be pulled down to V minus. So the usage of PMP or NPN is actually depends on the uh, PLC itself from the PLC providers. Next, we are going to look into the input wiring uh, that is normally used by the PLC. So uh, for a modern PLC, usually they are using the opto isolators. So what is opto isolators? So opto isolator is also called as opto coupler, photocoupler or optical isolator. It is an electronic, uh, electronic component that transfers the electrical signals between two isolated circuits. Okay, this is isolated circuits by using lights. Okay, so an opto isolator is a device of light producing element such as LED and a light sensing element such as phototransistor. So the separation of the sensing and output devices in the opto isolator provides the input to the PLC with the voltage isolation since the only connection between the input terminal and the input to the PLC is a light beam. So for example, this is the input terminal to the PLC. Okay, and then uh, uh, this is the output devices or this is other devices. So these are the two isolated circuits. So it is connected by using a light beam here. So the use of opto isolator in the PLC is actually to prevent high voltage from affecting the system. Okay, that's why uh, they're using uh, the opto oscillator to connect these two isolated circuits because to avoid any high voltages or high currents interference or affecting either of the systems. So there are two types of opto oscillator. The first, the first one is for uh, opto oscillator for DC unit PLC. Okay, and then the second one is opto oscillator for AC unit. PLC. So in the AC unit PLC, it has a bi-directional LEDs here, which entertain the alternating current in the AC signal. For the input wiring of the PLC, it can be configured into two ways, which the first one is having a single common, and then the second one is the isolated input. So in some units, if all inputs are isolated from each other, meaning that there is no common connection between any two or more inputs. Otherwise, it is connected to one common terminal. So we will look into uh, these two types of input to the PLC. We start with the first input that having a single common. In this input wiring that having a single common, this schematic shows that all the inputs to the PLC having a common connection, Okay, which you can see here, all of this uh, negative uh, line of each circuit 
is connected to one common. Okay, so meaning that this all of these inputs to the PLCs are having a common connection here. It can be a ground, for example. So the, the wire that is connected to the input com, uh, to the input common terminal for opto oscillator is the negative connection for lighting LEDs in the opto oscillator. So if you can see here, this is the positive. The positive one is connected to the uh, to the input, and then the negative of this LED is actually connected. Okay, all of this negative connecting is connected to the input common. So meaning that everything is connected to the ground here. Okay, so this means that any switch device connected to input 1, 2 and 3 must have the opposite end of the device that is connected to the positive voltage in order to light the LED in the opto oscillator. So meaning that this input is actually have some connection to the positive. Okay, the positive uh, voltage in the other side or in the opposite side of this device. If more than one power supply is used to power the devices, all of them must have the negative power lead connected to input COM. So meaning that if it has, if these devices are connected to the different power sources, for example, input 1 is connected to 12 volt, okay, input 3 is connected to 24 volt, and then let's say input, th uh, input 3 is connected to 5 volt. So it has three different uh, input sources, meaning that the end or the uh, the another opposite end of this circuit must be connected to a common ground here. The next one uh, is the example of inputs having a single common. Okay, uh, in this input one, you have a switch one here. Okay, and then uh, in the input two, you have switch here, and then this switch is connected to the power supply one here while the third input is connected to a different power supply here. So meaning that the end of this negative uh, side of this LED is connected to the common ground here. So this is the example of inputs that having a single common. Now we look into the isolated inputs. This is a diagram of the isolated inputs. So each input has no connection with any other input Okay, they are isolated. So input here, there is no connection with input 2. Input 2 has no connection with input 3 or 1. Okay, each one may be connected as desired with no concern for power supply interaction. The only requirement is that for the LED in the opto oscillator to light, a positive voltage must be applied to the positive input terminal and then respect to the negative terminal. So meaning that each of the input has its own uh, positive and negative terminal. So this is the example of three devices that are connected to the PLC, which each of these devices is an isolated uh, devices. So you can see here, it has its own uh, positive and negative terminal for each device. Okay, And then there is no common contact from these devices. So as we has been introduced to the input wiring to the PLC, uh, by using the opto isolator, now we move to the output wiring of the PLC. So the PLC can be uh, connected to output by using the relay or solid state output. So relay, magnetically operated mechanical switch contacts, and then it can use to control up to 2 amperes or when a very low resistance is required or very low resistance devices is required. While the solid state outputs, it can take the form of TTL, which is the transistor uh, transfer logic, or triad. So the transistor output are often collector, which is using the common emitter, and use either MPN or PMP transistor. So this type output can control lamps and low power DC circuit, uh, such as a small DC release. The TTL logic outputs are available to drive the logic circuitry, either 1 or 0, or 0 or 5 volt while the tri outputs are used to control the low power AC loads such as lighting, motor starters and contactors. So the relay outputs can be described in these three different forms which form A, it has a single pole normally open circuit. In form B, it, uh, it is a single pole normally closed contact that is similar to a single normally closed switch while form C, it is a single pole but with a double throw contacts. 
This figure shows the output of the PLC that is having Form C contact terminal. Note that common terminal for each of the three relays is connected to one common terminal here, okay, which is named as the output COM here. Since all relays have one common terminal, all power supplies or several is that is associated with the outputs to be driven must have one common connection. So meaning that uh, this output, let's say this is the output 1, output 2, and output 3. But each of these output must have common input to the output comp. This is an example of the common terminal by using the form C contact. Uh, for example, like the first output is uh, illuminating the lamp 1. The second output is lighting uh, the lamp 2. And then the third output is energizing a solenoid, a solenoid here. So all of the outputs are connected to the common power supply here. So this is the common terminal of the relay outputs. Next, we have the isolated outputs. So in this figure, it shows a PLC relay output unit with three isolated form C contacts. These outputs may be used for any purpose to drive any device with no concern for connection between sources. Okay, since all the sources are isolated. So there is no contact uh, that will close uh, when the output is on and no NC contacts only opens when the output is on. So there is no contact, okay? That is interferencing between these three outputs. This is an example of the isolated outputs. So each of the output devices are not connected to each other. They have a isolated circuits and they have their own power supply. This is an example of isolated outputs of the PLC by using the Form C contacts. The next one is the solid state outputs. So there are several types of solid state outputs that are available for PLC. So it can be either transistor, triac or TTL. So transistor uh, usually uh, an open collector with a common terminal that is connected uh, to the emitters of all outputs. Okay, for example, this is the NPN transistor. So the transistor output unit providing three open collector outputs, uh, which has been uh, which is shown in this figure. In most units, the transistors are optically isolated from the PLC. Uh, this unit has all the emitters of the output transistors connected to one common terminal label outcome here. So the transistor that used in the uh, solid state outputs can be either NPN for syncing outputs or PMP for sourcing outputs. For syncing outputs, the current will always flow into the output terminal. Okay, it will always flow into the output terminal. While for sourcing outputs, the current will always flow out of the output terminal. The sourcing and syncing description confirms to conventional current flow from positive to negative. So notice that the transistor used in the figure are PMP type and the common terminal would need to be connected to the positive terminal of the power supply in order for the transistor to be properly biased. This will cause the outputs to be pulled in a positive direction when the transistor is turned on. Okay, so this output will be pulled to the positive direction. That's why it is called as a sourcing output. While for the sinking output, the current will flow to the common ground here. That's why it is called as a sinking output. Now we move to triac. So triac stands for triod for alternating current. It is a bi-directional device that has three terminals that can pass the current uh, in both forward and reverse bias conditions. Hence, it is an AC control device. So all output have one common terminal that will be connected to one of the AC power source, providing power for the output devices being controlled. So each triad is triggered when the output associated with it is turned on. Okay, if the output uh, that is associated with the eastern on, so this triad will be turned on. 
So please notice that the tri outputs uh, in this figure are optically isolated. Okay, it is at, uh, optically isolated here in order to allow the PLC to control very high voltage with isolations of this voltage from low voltage circuitry of the PLC because uh, PLC, it is a low voltage circuitry but maybe the output is a high voltage circuitry that's why I use the, uh, the isolation types of circuit here this is example of wiring diagram for the tri output unit the common terminal for the tri is connected to one side of the AC source powering the output devices controlled by the unit okay, it is connected to one common power source here to control the output devices this is another example of the wiring diagram for the tri output unit so the common terminal for the tri is connected to one side of the AC source here that can be controlled by the unit okay for example like AC power source here so you can see here the tri here is using the isolation circuit by using the light beams here so why it is using the isolation circuit here because it wants to isolate the plc system with the output devices okay to control the interferencing circuits uh, or interferencing signal between these two systems uh, that can damage either plc or the output devices so we are at the end of the topic today Hopefully, after this lesson, you will understand the interfacing techniques that has been used uh, to connect the input and outputs uh, to the PLC. And then, uh, you need to know the PLC connection with the uh, input sources. Okay, and then the uh, input connection to the PLC by using the syncing or sourcing circuit uh, that manipulating the usage of the MPN or PMP transistors and then also uh, you can understand what is a single common input or what are the isolated inputs uh, similar to the outputs uh, which it can be connected uh, to output that have a single common connection or it can be an isolated output devices okay and then at the plc output you can understand the use of the solid state outputs which is uh, transistors uh, ttl or triac to produce output for dc or ac uh, type of devices and then it has three forms of com contact and then uh, this output it also can be a common terminal output or maybe it can be isolated outputs so i'll see you again in the next topic thank you